Hello, this is Sickly Yield, and I'm here to talk to you about using Blender's Fluid Simulation with Scenes from Dad Studio. You need to install the latest version of Blender, which is available for free from blender.org. And I will try to walk you through the process as much as possible. It can be very different from other programs. So I've started with my Scene in Dad Studio. You want to have your Scene in Dad Studio complete as much as possible before you start, because you will need to export it to Wavefront to use with the Liquid Simulator. So, I've created this scene using DM's Poses and Blocks, Genesis 3 Female, this bandeau bikini from Daz 3D, and the wet hair from Renderosity by Pretty 3D. I used Zeb Zero and Dragonstorm's Pose Converter to convert the pose from Genesis 2 to Genesis 3. This is a really essential product, by the way, I really recommend it. So, here's my scene. I've got the lights set up here. In this case, I'm just using photometrics because this is for a tutorial and I want it to render faster. I still prefer the look of mesh lights for rendering on skin. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and Wavefront to OBJ. And I can export this to anywhere. What's important is that I'm going to use Daz Studio as my preset. I'm not going to use Blender because the Blender preset is broken and has been for some time partly because of differences in axis rotation between the two programs. It's never really been fixed, so I'm going to use the Daz Studio one. I used to use the Poser one a lot, but Poser's units are very tiny compared to Blender's, and Daz Studios are very large compared to Blender's, and large is easier to work with with the simulation. So I'm going to do that. And while that exports, I will start Blender. This looks a little different from the way Blender loads by default. Pressing N makes this view panel appear and disappear on the right. And if you scroll down that panel, you will find the display section. You can left click on these arrows to show or hide. I've set the grid floor to lines 200, scale 5, and subdivisions 10. Otherwise, I would get a very large mesh in the middle of a very small area. On the left, this is my tools and create panel we'll be using today. Down here is the timeline which I'm going to set the end to 100. And this is a UV panel, which we're not going to use today, so you don't really need that for this tutorial. So I'm going to use File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ. And I will go to where I exported that last one. I will use these import settings where I keep vertex order. This is less important for this tutorial, more important for other things. You can create an import preset by hitting this plus button. I've got one here that I created. Make sure, in general, you want to have polygroups and keep vert order checked. That's more useful if you're doing morphs or other import-export things, because I use Blender for all of my morphing. And I'll just wait for that large file to import there. It's a good-sized OBJ. We're actually going to prune a lot of this. You can also hide items in Studio before you export. But for me, it's faster to delete geometry in Blender than it is in Daz Studio to hide them. There we go. All right, that's pretty huge, as you can see. I'm going to... I can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel for visibility. Pressing 5 makes the view orthographic or perspective on the numpad. Other numpad keys, 1, 3, 7, and... Control 3, Control 1, Control 7. Those are your orthographic views. And then you can also mo move the view by holding down the middle mouse wheel and scrolling it about. Holding down Shift and moving the mouse with the mouse wheel drags the screen this way. Right now, I'm going to prune most of this geometry because the simulation will choke on a very large scene if you try to simulate an entire huge thing at once. What I did there was to press B, create a bounding box, scroll it around the area with Genesis 3 female, and let go, and it will select that. And then I will go to this little panel over here and choose Select Inverse, or Control i Now I press Delete, and this panel comes up, and I choose Vertices. Now that's gone. Hitting the tab key moves me in and out of edit mode. And I had 
had to be in edit mode to delete geometry. That's what happened there. Tab into edit, tab into object mode. Now I've got my geometry. I need a floor to collide with as well. So I'm going to go to the left panel and click create and plane. It created this tiny plane here, so I will just scale that up. Then I will go to the right hand panel here. And the very last icon on the end looks a little bit like a stylized bouncing ball. And I will click fluid and obstacle. And I will right click to select Genesis 3 female on the box there, and I will do the same. Fluid, obstacle. Now I need to add an inflow and a domain, and I'll add the inflow first. This is what Blender calls the sphere that the water comes from. The spheres seem to work the best. So I'm going to position this little sphere up here above this box, right there. And I'm going to once again go to the physics panel and click fluid and inflow. I'm going to set y to 2 and z to negative 2. Remember z is the vertical axis in Blender, so this means that fluid will forcefully move down and this way. You would use x if you want, for example, a stream of fluid to the side or other things like that. Then I will create my domain last of all using create cube because it has to enclose all of this. If you get a simulation that refuses to run, you probably have a cube that's too large and or a seam that's too large for your computer's hardware. I'm working with a 6 core and even then I have limitations, so this is very demanding of your hardware in general. I will go again to the physics panel and this time I'll choose fluid and domain. It comes up with these options here. I will set final resolution to 200 for this cookie sim. Viewport display to final so I can see what's going on over here. I'll leave the time at start 0 and end 4. This is 4 seconds. This down here, the timeline, is in frames. 100 frames is 4 seconds. That's why those are the numbers that they are. Under fluid world, I will choose a viscosity preset. The original one for water was actually a little too viscous for me still, so I've made this new one called water 2 which is base 0.25 and exponent 10. You can hit this plus sign to create your own fluid presets. And I will set the real world size to, it looks like about three meters. That's the size of this cube in relative terms. I assume there's probably a way to determine what it exactly should be, but I don't know it. Now that I've got that set up, I've got my domain pressing Z goes to wireframe, I've got my inflow, and I've got my collision object. So Z back to opaque mode, and I will click bake. It says required memory there. That's how much space this will take up on disk. It's actually using the CPU to calculate the simulation. I really would not try this with less than a quad core from Intel. AMD released an 8-core not that long ago, but it performs basically exactly like a quad-core from Intel. And you can verify this looking up benchmarks yourself. Alright, I'm going to stop the recording while the simulation runs, and I will start it again when it's finished. And we have Glop. I hit play down here on this timeline, the right pointing arrow there to run my sim when it was finished. And this is at resolution 200, but I'm going to run it again at 600 because it just looks too thick. We set our real world size correctly. We set our viscosity correctly. That pretty much only leaves a resolution as the culprit for a thick, gloppy looking water sim like we have here. You can also see it running up against the edge of the domain boundary in front of her there. So I will probably enlarge the domain as well. So I'm going to pause that, back to frame one. There we go. And right click on the domain, which still shows itself in fluid form, and tab into edit mode so it becomes a cube again. And I'm going to move the cube 
this way a little bit using G and X. And then I can press B to create a bounding box there to drag those vertices over. Left click sets them in place where I want them to be. And I'm going to calculate the simulation again. This will take some time. It took about 15 minutes at resolution 200. It might actually take half an hour or more at resolution 600, we will see. I also changed the setting on the inflow because originally I had it at y2 and z negative 2, but it needed to be x2. I had the y and x dimensions mixed up, and I apologize for that. So let's try our sim again, and I will be back. And we're back again. It took some time to get this set up properly and running properly because I would lose a few hours every time I needed to tweak settings, and that will happen when you're rendering at higher resolutions. But now I've got it rendered to 700, and I rendered about 100 frames, or 4 seconds. And I'm going to hit play down here on the timeline, and there it goes. It's still not optimal in terms of drop size, but it's better. I've heard it suggested on my DeviantArt that part of the problem is that I imported it too large of a scale, and that if I scale down the Daz Studio OBJ on import, I might get better droplet results. So that's something to try in the future, or if you're having issues with droplet size being too large. Now, when I'm ready to export this back to Daz Studio, what I'm going to do is I will choose a frame that I like, and I'll hit pause on the timeline. And I'm going to go with just about here. And I'm not going to save the file here because I want it to keep my simulation. What I am going to do is go to the modifier panel, which looks like the tiny wrench here over on the right. And it says fluid sim apply. I'll click apply. And that ends the simulation on this frame. So I will export Wavefront, and I'll export back to that Fluid Sim Tutorial directory. It's going to take a minute because Simulated Fluid has a lot of geometry. It's messy geometry, it's made up of triangles. If you want to use it in a product, you should turn it back to quads, or fix it with ZBrush's Z Remesher, or a similar tool. And I'll go back to Daz Studio here. And use File, Import, and get that wave front back from the directory where I saved it. There it is. And I will select it and go to Surfaces. And I'm just going to apply Daz's default iRay water shader to it. One of the great advantages of iRay is that it is not significantly disadvantaged by transparency or fluids. Let's see. Okay, Daz Uber and water. There we go. Then I will just do a quick render for you to demonstrate this. It should be relatively fast because this is a scene lit with photometrics. Again, I don't really recommend photometrics for lighting skin. In particular, you should remember that if you're lighting with photometrics, it will make skin look paler or more washed out than mesh lights will. This is partly why Victoria 7 or other DAS created materials tend to look too tan, too dark skinned to some people. It's because, usually because they're rendering with mesh lights, and I don't know this, but I suspect those materials were developed for photometrics. Now I'm just waiting for the render to pop up here. And there it is. So now we have a scene with fluids. That's all there is to it. It can be a time-consuming process. Things about it can be frustrating, but it's worth it. If that's what you want in the scene, there's no other way to get quite the same thing. 
Now I'm going to talk briefly about things that can cause your simulation to fail, which is something you will run into a lot at some point. One is if the fluid domain does not contain your inflow object, the inflow object being this sphere that the fluid comes out of. So when you right click to select your fluid domain and tab into edit mode, and it turns back into a sphere, which it didn't there because it's already been simulated. There's the one that's not on a later frame. Here we go. That simulation domain should contain the inflow object. Otherwise, the simulation will fail. If the inflow object is too small for the resolution of your sim, simulation will fail. So if you have this the size of a golf ball and your simulation resolution is 50, and I bake sim, then it will probably fail. I'm waiting to see if it does. You can tell when a simulation is failing because the progress bar will appear, but nothing will happen. It will just remain a giant cube like this, regardless of the frame. Yep, it did fail. So and then no matter what frame I go to down here, it will remain a giant cube. It can be hard to tell if it's doing this on a higher resolution sim. Remember to always give it one to five minutes to actually start. If the simulation is being run at resolution 700 or above, it can literally take five minutes for it to start. So don't panic until you've given it at least five minutes to see if the sim has actually failed. But remember that the smaller this inflow object is, the higher the sim resolution has to be. All right, that's all for now. Good luck with your simulations and happy rendering.